guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie. So today I'm here with Romeo and Juliet, Act 4, Scenes 3 to 5. So let's just get right into this, shall we? So, starting off with scene 3, in her bedchamber, Juliet asks the nurse to let her spend the night by herself and then she repeats the request to Lady Capulet when she arrives. Alone, clutching the file given to her by Friar Lawrence, she wonders what will happen when she drinks it if the friar is unworthy and merely seeks to hide his role in her marriage to Romeo. She might awaken in the tomb and go mad with fear. She also has a vision in which she sees Tybalt's ghost searching for Romeo. She begs Tybalt's ghost to quit its search for Romeo and toasting to Romeo, she drinks the contents of the vial. Now, this is a famous speech that I have talked about many a time that I love so much. It is. Well, I'll give you the start of it. Please excuse, I haven't done acting in a few months. Please excuse it. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse! What should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. What if this mixture don't work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wait before the time that Romeo comes to redeem me? There's a fearful point. That's as much as I remember before forgetting it all, essentially. So that is the famous speech where she then goes on to say a lack, a lack, and all that shit. That is a very famous scene and it is essentially her biggest soliloquy and it's a very often used female monologue and I am one of those often used actors that do use it because it's one of my favourite ones and when you've worked in a monologue for so long it's one of your favourites. So essentially that scene three is basically, the most part of it is the soliloquy from Juliet. Now on to scenes four to five. Early the next morning the Capulet House is a flutter with preparations for the wedding. Capulet sends the nurse to go wake Juliet. The nurse then finds Juliet dead and begins to wail. Soon joined by both Lady Capulet and Capulet, Paris arrives with Friar Lawrence and a group of musicians for the wedding, where he learns what has happened. Paris joins in in the uh, lamentations. The friar reminds them all that Juliet has gone to a better place and urges them to make ready for her funeral. Uh, sorrowfully they comply and exit. Now on to scene 5, left behind, the musicians pack up as their task has been cut short essentially. Peter, the Capulet servant, uh, enters and asks musicians to play a happy tune to ease his sorrowful heart. Uh, the musicians refuse, arguing that to play such music would be inappropriate. Angered, Peter insults the musicians who respond in kind. After singing, um, a final insult at musician, Peter leaves the musicians um, and the musicians then decide to wait for the mourners to return so they might get to eat the lunch that will be served. So let's analyse scenes three to five. So once again, Juliet demonstrates her strength. She comes up with reason after reason after reason why drinking this potion might cause her harm physically or mentally. Uh, but she chooses to drink it anyway. In this action, she not only attempts to circumvent the forces that obstruct her relationship with Romeo, she takes also full, responsibil for, full responsibility for herself. She recognises that drinking the potion might lead her to madness or to death. Drinking the potion therefore constitutes an action in which she takes her life into her own hands and determines its worth to her. So no one else has decided that she's to take this potion. She's taken it herself because she knows that this is what she, the route she wants to go down. And for once her mother are, and the nurse isn't making decisions for her, it's her. In addition to the obvious foreshadowing in Juliet's vision of Tybalt's angered and revengeful ghost, uh, her drinking of the potion also hints at future events, which we know about. She drinks the potion just as Romeo will later drink the apothecary's poison. Uh, in drinking the potion, she not only demonstrates a willingness to take her life into her own hands, um, she goes against what is expected of women and takes action in the 
and essentially takes action. And that's a very smart thing of Shakespeare to do. Shakespeare, as much as his plays are like, you know, Hamlet, Macbeth and all that, they're all centred around men, there's always men. I always find that the women in some of these plays are stronger than the men, especially in Romeo and Juliet. I definitely feel that Juliet, although she's younger, is ten times stronger than what Romeo is. Um, in their mourning for Juliet, the Capulets appear less as a hostile force uh, arrayed against the loves and more and, and more as individuals. The audience gains an understanding um, of the uni uh, immense uh, in hopes that the Capulets had placed on Juliet, as well as a sense of their love for her. Similarly, Paris's love for Juliet seems wholly legitimate. Um, his wailing cannot simply be taken as grief over a loss of a wife who might have brought him fortune. Um, it seems more personal than that, more like grieving over the loss of a loved one, which I do think Paris did. I think Paris did love Juliet, but obviously Juliet loved Romeo and it was just a shame, but I think a lot of people, especially me, think that we wish that it hadn't been a tragedy and that Paris and Juliet could have ended up together. So many productions of Romeo and Juliet cut scene five, which is the one with Peter, uh, depicting Peter and the musicians. Uh, productions do this for a good reason. The scene, um, the scene's humour and traded insults seem ill-placed at such a tragic uh, moment in the play. I mean, yes, it allows for comic relief before act five, but uh, it's not essentially necessary. That's why we're not analysing, because it's really, really not that necessary. Um, and that was it. So, yeah. Join me tomorrow for another video. See you then. Bye.